subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from us. Hello and welcome to the Expert Interview Series and today we are thrilled to have Ms. Tina Chakraborty, the Head of Capability Build at Philip Morris International London. With over 23 years of hands-on experience across diverse industries and multiple countries, Tina is a Six Sigma certified HR leader, life coach and a force of positive change. From her strategic achievements in participative management to being a digital savvy leader, Tina's journey is a masterclass in navigating the ever-evolving landscape of human resources. With a track record of success in team leadership, networking and influencing, she has truly left an impressive mark in each organization she has been part of. Join us as we uncover the key to building resilient organizations, fostering continuous improvement and staying ahead in the game with the one and only Ms. Tina Chakrabarti. Welcome you to the expert interview series, ma'am, and hope Thank our viewers you. get to learn from your experiences. Thank you, Pooja. You're very kind. I mean, that introduction sounded like <laughs> someone else, but then, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, one of the things that I've realized that as years have passed, um, the role that we try to define with specific things, saying that to-do lists, uh, it gets blurry. And your work pretty much does not define any specific pattern or any specific structure. Um, I have learned that that is one of the success formula for me, that every day you begin fresh and you put your attention to what is required rather than trying to formulate one day before. I've fallen into that trap. You make your to-do list, but then that is not where you require your attention that day. The day changes and the best late plans go to go into the drain. So my day primarily comprises of collaborations and communications. And a lot of it is also devoted towards strategy and content because in capability building, it is also about building content for a successful organization. But having said that, the percentages vary day by day. When I say collaborations and conversations and communication, it is about talking to the right people. Um, one of the things that I've seen people fall, fall into a trap of is blocking their whole day with meetings, simply jamming their whole day. And then the, after the entire day, they're like, what did I accomplish today? So what I try to do, I'm still learning, still working at it, is meaningful meetings, meaningful conversations with agendas. And that makes a step, positive step towards an impact of what we're trying to do on our job. For example, working with stakeholders mm -hmm. who are the ones who are supporting your cause and pushing you forward, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, peers who support you from other departments, whose help you lean on when you want to make yourself successful and they lean on you. Right. So you have to give them the time, actively find time for that. Right. Third, the ones who get most neglected, team members. Talk to them, talk to them for less period of time, talk genuinely. Do not say, hey, how are you? And move on. Mean it if you are talking and spend that time productively to push them forward and continue to check on them. Are they still on board with your agenda? Are they kind of not in that space? So that takes quite, quite a lot of presence and quite a lot of engagement. Those are the three kinds of conversations. When we talk about strategy, it is about keeping your eyes on the prize, the North Star. And if we are falling off the rails, there are any challenges, that is where the strategy bit comes in. How do we stay on course? And if we have to change on the course, what are the few things we can do to make sure that we still are able to achieve what we set out to? Right. So being agile, being communicative, and being present. Very interesting question. I used to think this question is a cliche when I used to hear it, let us say 10 years back. I used to say, huh, how does it make a difference? It's the same job, it's just a different industry. Right. But as I moved through different industries, very soon that, um, that myth got busted. When you work across industries, one thing that you realize is the key strength is being, being adaptable, right. being, being able to change on the go and not having any fixed point of views about, oh, this worked here, it will work here as well. Right. It doesn't. The people are different. The industry is different. The experience is different. 
the culture is different. So what will carry you through various industries and will carry you through to success in various jobs is if you're adaptable, you are flexible, and you are very clear about what your objectives in achieving the goal is, because it is, it is very easy to get confused. When you work in different industry, work in different jobs, the goals are different. So, and everybody is pushing information at you and everybody has huge expectations from you. It is easy to move away from the core objective of your job. So if you're adaptable, you are flexible, you are willing to change, you're willing to receive feedback from anyone and everyone, because that's one thing we also block out, right? People upwards can give us feedback, but people on the side and people below, eh, it's okay. Yeah. But when you're willing to receive feedback from everybody, learn from everybody. That is will, that is what con contributes to your adaptability, your change management, your flexibility. And that is what I've learned when I move across various industries and jobs. Okay. Because it can get difficult. You are the new kid on the block. If you join a new organization, navigating your way can be quite overwhelming. And it continues to be. In a new organization, I've joined a new organization recently. It continues to be. But the only thing that keeps me sane, and I'm saying it literally, quote unquote, sane, because it can be so overwhelming that you can be like, oh my God, what's happening? Yeah. Adaptability, flexibility, communication, and being open to feedback. Right. Feedback from anywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's Yes. Right. I think initially the the learning style or the leadership style was very directive. You know, it was yes. from top to bottom. But now, yes. as as we've heard from various, uh, you know, from various interviews and from various mentors, that it has to be all all across. You have to hear from, you know, hear perspective of from the juniors, seniors, from your level as well, so that an all around, all around approach is taken. That 360 concept used to exist, but then I think it is more relevant now than ever. Because there is so much information, knowledge, and wealth of expertise, even these new kids have, which we have no clue about. And they are the ones who are the trendsetters. They are the ones who are really in the midst of all this change that is happening in various industries. So if we are able to open, be open, and learn from everybody and receive feedback from them, that is what keeps the organization agile. Otherwise, you become a large dinosaur. <laughs> at, the, at the brink of death, you know. So when you keep changing and you see that, okay, this is what is required to change in the organization. Let's change it. That can only come when you're open to feedback from everybody. And it's a continuous process. See, change is uncomfortable. Right. Everybody says they want change. You and I can sit in interviews and talk about change and glorify change, but that is the most uncomfortable things. Right. We have to, we have to acknowledge the fact that we work with various generations of people, and change means different things for different people. It can be insecurity for certain people. It can be the fear of redundancy for some people. It can be the, it can be the overwhelm of oh my god, I have to learn new things for some people. It is different for different people. So when you when you acknowledge that and you realize that this is something that I will have to deal with, mm -hmm. you understand that communicating with people exactly what is required from them, what the change will mean for them, mm -hmm. what benefit it will bring them, and what benefit it will bring to the organization overall becomes key. If you structure these conversations in a way that people are able to relate to it and get out of their heads. Most of the time, all of this drama is happening inside their heads. Right. The moment they hear there is a change to happen or there is something else that is expected, mm -hmm. is that they're going to overwhelm. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And these conspiracy theories begin. And then very soon they lose the plot. And by the time you are talking to them, the damage has been done. Right. So it is about structuring communications in a way you have complete and as transparent as you get. Because I will not lie here saying that, oh, be completely transparent. It's not possible at all times. There are some pieces of information that you cannot disclose immediately. It takes time to unravel. And some we are ourselves not changed, are sure of. We are ourselves still figuring it out. So you cannot go and mislead people.
So I'm going to respond to this question in two pieces. One is as a leader, how do you handle it? You communicate, you communicate, you communicate and communicate and you communicate a little more. Right. You take, make time for as many conversations as required to make the wisdom clear. And it can also happen for your leader. Your leader who is going to be impacted by a project that you are doing in the way how learning happens in the organization how career development happens in the organization so it is not necessarily downward management it is also upward management and that is where you are becoming a situational leader who is leading that change so communication becomes important and not just blabbering and going on incessant number of emails with the same presentation structuring your conversations which makes more sense right. not sticking to one form of communication it can be focus groups it can be coffee table conversations it can be informal conversations near the water cooler structuring your conversations around the key objectives of making sure people understand what the vision is why the organization is making the change it is and what benefits will it bring in the large picture and please do not panic guys we are here for you and we will work it out when the we loses the plot everybody runs into their eyes people start applying for jobs people start saying oh my god i need to move out of this department mm -hmm. so it is about managing this whole whole moving piece in the best possible manner there is no 100% success formula but yeah if you structure it this way it makes it easy right so while you are implementing uh, you know these changes what kind of challenges uh, do you come across i mean of course uh, communication is there the that makes you know improves the situation but there certainly would be some challenges which are out of control or couldn't be managed there are there are quite a few challenges that you will face first of all uh, people do not people do not relate to the larger agenda and the resistance can become the biggest to overcome and that's why i began with that saying that change management is the most difficult thing one right. second you also have to recognize that when you bring in a change there are some things that become irrelevant redundant right. so then it becomes the unpopular conversation about how are we going to deal with the situation that there would be some skills will no longer be required right and most of the time change is thrown upon us at a very small time period which right. means that you have to really run to implement it hmm. so how do you deal with that quick fire change that you have to implement hmm. you have to be open and honest about it if there are some people who will no longer be doing the same jobs or jobs are going to be upskilled or deskilled both ways there's a, a resistance that you will face right. well, let's face it people will not like it so when when they don't get the agenda they like it even less so that means that if somebody is going to be upskilled uh -huh. somebody's job locations has to change or they need to learn a couple of new things it is about giving them the longest possible heads up and also try to give them a visual representation of what your life will look like same is the situation for jobs that are being downskilled where people will no longer be required or the skills have become redundant as a leader it becomes our responsibility to make sure that we look for the best possible use of the talent and not chopping off a person saying that okay this is not required we need to figure out what to do with this person let's move on but unfortunately what happens is when you move on that person enters a no man's land and has no clarity about what's going to happen to me and that can breed a toxic culture in the organization because people talk right. people talk and they also most of the time when they talk from this space they peddle misinformation right. so how well are you planned to handle the people either people or the skills that will no longer be required and what can we do proactively to use the talent that we have of this person in some other place so it is not always 100% possible but if we plan well a lot of damage can be avoided so that is the biggest challenge i would say rest of the challenges are manageable working with vendors making the change making the switch that is not very difficult it's difficult but not very difficult but the biggest challenge is how you deal with situations where we might have to 
have some deal with some redundancy because one thing that you have to remember if you are in this space of working with people is people run organizations mm. strategies will happen people like us will come and go but at at the end of it it is the workforce that takes the organization forward for any and every position that you take up in leadership you have to be very clear about three things i am not here forever right. i do not shape anything whatever i do is represents the organization and third it's people it's people it's people people run the organization if you are able to manage that well and integrate digitization along with that mm-hmm. you make sure that you do not lose any information you lose talent but the knowledge stays with you and then you can swap that out for even better and greater talent mm-hmm. so you have to have that objectivity along with uh, with empathy for what people go through when huge change happens for the at the risk of um, sounding a bit of uh, preachy um when you work as a team builder and your job is to be a motivator it is about the fact that people most of the time do not even know their potential they do not know what they are good at they do not know what they are great at and most of the times they don't even know what they want in their lives they have these point of views and they have these images that they have from other people be it brother sister family society what they see on tv or social media okay. i want to be that i want to be that i want to be that if you truly want to successfully run a team you need to know your people that takes time right that takes engaging conversations that requires you to be vulnerable because you have to share pieces of you to be able to connect with people right genuine connections take time so that is one thing that i spend maximum time in talking to people finding out who they are what defines them what their strengths are and this knowing strengths takes time because you see the person in action so i might come and tell you you know i am a wonderful singer but unless you see me sing in various forums various situations you really do not know how good i am it's my 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 in my head i think i am a great singer right. and everybody in my family is a singer so that's the only career possible for me when you really talk to people you get to know three things what their fears are hmm. their aspirations are what their potential is and what their strengths are you know right. and then you introduce them to themselves hmm. you have to make this person meet himself or herself and then the journey becomes easy so once you've done that the person whom you're working with gets to see that this person as a leader is taking genuine interest in my life and it is not about invading privacy right. it is about using your wits wisdom and judgment to see what are these certain behaviors an outcome of and when you become vulnerable there are a lot of walls that you break down for people to be comfortable with you trust you and share pieces of their life knowing that it will be confidential that's one big part of it right and then when people hear me say that they say oh well but it's all goody goody but at the end of it you have people to uh, deliver outcomes and that is where what i say is that it is not a waste of time it is about really knowing how much can i trust this person with this job right so pooja might be fantastic in a group setting when she's working with people but as an individual contributor she's a disaster so i will never put her in a project where she will have to work all alone she works good with people Tina doesn't work good with people she works with someone else somebody else so when you understand how you can get the best outcome from this person you have already done 70% of your job right after that what it says is what's in it for you how will you do it what planning excel sheets charts all of that come in clear the whiff them tell people the north star this is what we need to achieve guys we got to run with it but you have the advantage now you know your people pool you know what you miss you know what you absolutely don't have that means that you can swap out talent and if you're swapping out people because you know how what they are good at you can find roles short term long term for them to move and so that you can bring in talent which will be more contributed to you it is not selfish it is about being aware of what do i want my team to look like what strengths i require and currently what do i have 
it's like having a work desk where you have a computer screen but you do require a larger screen because most of the time you're working with something you don't have a large screen right now but you do have two laptops so i can swap out one laptop for a larger screen but it is not about throwing the laptop in the bin it is about making sure the other laptop goes to a place where it is valued it is used and you get in the large screen at the right time i'm using a silly example but that is what when you are having to deliver results for an organization only talking to people will not help it gives you the head start knowing that who are the people i'm going to work with and what i require but once you clear what i have my as is then you can utilize their skills their talents and then you can plan for the future that okay right now i'm working with this but this is what needs to change right. and then people also see your genuine interest in making them successful setting them up for all the information and requirements that they have to make them do their job really well give them on the spot feedback do not delete tally because you spend that time right. being vulnerable connecting with the person mm-hmm. when you can tell hey come here what did you just do it becomes easier because the person is willing to receive there is no there's less of formality right on the spot feedback becomes easier agile becomes easier you know what we planned this yesterday we are changing it today come on guys let's get to it people will receive you better because you do spend quality time with them understanding and even getting the feedback you did that yesterday it didn't work for us you know you just threw everything at us and you made us do this in 2 hours it was not fair take that feedback yeah i'm sorry but what i'm saying is that that is what will help you put the foundation in spend the time Right. spend the time connect with people understand and if you can't understand someone ask for help ask for someone else to talk to them and find out hey it looks like she doesn't like me too much she doesn't talk to me i ask her so many things she has this wall with me can you help me ask your colleagues lean on them try to understand if something is someone is not working with you why and what is the best we can do for them I mean that's what I've been doing all my life. I'm I'm very vanilla, simple. I don't go into complex people management models, etc. Right. People are people. You talk to them, you talk back. They talk back at you. The change is crazy, and what human resources used to be, learning, development, all these people skills used to be have completely changed. Right. So there was this cushy comfort. All of us are aware of this. a um, whole enigma that was around human resources it was like a thing that stays forever right. it will always be there many people would say you know move into human resources that's not going anywhere we have to acknowledge that that has changed human resources has to be more engaging now and already we moved to digital human resources there used to be so many people managing so many people at one point in time and now those head spans have shrunk people are looking at human resources now to see okay what value do you add because the administrative tasks are all gone to ai right, right? repetitive tasks don't exist anymore hmm. we had the paper management and i'm from that generation where we had blue files and we had cupboards full of employee files we had to staple we had to sign we had to scan all of that is gone everything is digital you have amazing um, tools automations available people no longer have to wait for 3 days to get a response from human resources people have gone into shared services models so you can outsource most of the work so all your admin work has been taken away from you all your repetitive tasks have been manual tasks have been eliminated what value do you add that is the question right now that is being asked of human resources what do you contribute to strategy how close are you to the business So right now if i had to give you three things that will completely change and has to continue changing for anybody who works in the people space is digitization be comfortable with it there will be 1 million things that can be accomplished when you embrace automation digitization in your own space don't resist it don't resist ai there will be a lot of things that will be forced upon you if you resi- resisting that's the first thing second thing instead of taking it as a threat and i'm saying this here i go i said it right now in a forum it is not a threat right. most of the people are resisting it because like oh my god i'll lose my job i will not be relevant anymore might be true 
but then how can you out surpass that outgrow that fear that value will come when you bring in strategy and knowledge unfortunately many of us in our middle age stop studying stop being aware of what's happening around in other industries stop going to classes adding courses adding accolades to themselves i am an example i didn't have an mba in human resources i am i'm a hardcore science person i'm in masters in physics but when i got into people related roles i realized that to stay with the crowd stay and grow in the organizations wherever i work it is important to keep adding skills to yourself so i added a life coach skill i became a happiness coach i did my mba from larsi monji i kept on adding to myself because one thing that will take you to doomsday is if you are comfortable in your comfort zone so the second thing other than digitization is be uncomfortable the moment you are in your comfort zone because that is a sure short recipe for failure because when you are comfortable you stop looking around you stop you stop hunting for knowledge information education for yourself and the third thing is stay close to the business human resource agenda that silo sitting in a corner life is happening we are doing our thing doesn't exist anymore and we've spoken in the past few years where we have said that we are getting more to business partnering delivering the business goals understanding what is required for the larger organizational objectives to be met not just managing people now it has become even more relevant because now we are the we have the biggest question of people sustainability right how sustainable is this workforce half of the things if we digitize we will not require this people So what do we give these people so that they are able to sustain not only this job or even if they are let go they are still able to continue their jobs what skills do we need to know about that we can plan for we can train them on and make available right. and for that you have to study you have to be aware you have to talk to people you have to go to networking events you have to ask for help from other colleagues in other industries saying how are you handling this what are you reading in udemy what courses are you doing what are the other edx uh, you know uh, forums where that we can go and pick up information that will be helpful for me for my organization how updated are you how close are you to the business how closely you are working with the business to understand the critical needs and then you know meeting that mm. so these three things are very important for you to right now i'm saying it at the risk of sounding somebody who is uh, or somebody who is trying to say that this is real the panic is real but it is real it is real if you are going to stay relevant you have to be able to do these three things and then your value doesn't go anyway ai cannot threaten you you cannot be made redundant i read i read a lot i i participate in linkedin i follow people whom i think have been able to accomplish something in lives i network a lot i try to go to networking events as much as my schedule permits i try to stay connected with the tribe of people with whom i started my job they are in all very good positions in various different organizations we share uh, conversations we find out what's happening in your world um how are you coping with change i read i listen i try to stay updated on social media as to what are the trends in large organizations how are they dealing with things right. it is all about it is not about blindly taking up courses and adding commendations to your uh, resume it is about being aware of what changes are happening around us reading up on it understanding what concepts you can bring in to your organization and what will work so those few things i think nothing can beat reading i am still from the generation that loves to read so i read it is not always engaging it is not always fun but it is required for you to stay relevant on top of your job knowing so when somebody comes and says oh i read about this this happened in google yes i know about it it shouldn't be a surprise so you have to stay on your tips know what working for other organizations and also know what is not which means that before the change is forced upon you you can yourself say well we are doing this right now 
but this will not be relevant in the next three years. What can we do to start planning right now so that we can phase out this in the long term? Short term, let's not change anything. Long term, can we start changing before everybody tells us that this needs to change? Right. So it's about staying updated, reading, talking, networking, and being brutally honest with yourself. What was working yesterday will not be working today. What do I need to phase out proactively? In terms of advice, I don't think I'm as huge and as um, influential to give advice, but I will share three bits of wisdom that I think you should keep with yourself. And I will give this in two bits. One is for people who are pursuing a career in human resources. Please take out all definitions that you have about what a human resource job is and throw it in the bin. The job of human resources right now is no longer as stereotype as it used to be. You have to come into any organization with the thought process that, first of all, you will be contributing to revenue outcomes. It is not a support function anymore. You will have to be present, work with the businesses, not have any inhibitions in terms of work hours, what will be required of me. You should be willing to study, learn, understand the business and not work at a distance. Oh, I don't work in the business, so I don't need to know. I just need to be a part of the strategy. Hear the sketchy bits of it. Immerse yourself. Immerse yourself into the business, the industry where you're going to work with. See what are the trends that are working in that industry. Be aware of it. Bring the people practices there and then you will be successful in your job. So the first tip is Take out all definitions that you have about human resources. Second, be prepared to work with the business, whichever business you're going to be a part of and work with them to solve the problems that they cannot because they're busy doing the job. They're busy creating the revenue. How can we partner with them to make sure that you're able to contribute to that cause? It is no longer a side function. And third is be very open to the idea of change. Change will be, like I said, if you do not lead the change, the change will be thrust upon you. So do not come into the, the job with the thought process that this is going to be stable, this is going to be long term, this is going to be um, whatever the dream is. Hmm. Go in with immense capacity and immense resilience for change happening to you and you having to continue changing really quick. Because nowadays, most organizations work like startups. They do not work like a traditional organizations where there is something called a straight curve. There isn't any. So that be comfortable with change. So that is some, that is the tip for somebody who is coming into the space. Read up, read up because information and knowledge never fails you. I'm not dismissing the various kinds of models and things that I studied in MDA. It has helped me. It has helped me put my experience in context for myself. So do not discount education, study, network, learn, be, be prepared to be a student for life. Right. If you're coming into this space and be prepared to have the boundaries of personal and professional sometimes blur. This is a cliche. Most people will say, oh, you have to respect boundaries. You have to respect boundaries. I say, let them blur. Because only when they blur a bit, you can be truly vulnerable with the people whom you will be working with. Otherwise, there will always be a barrier between your job and your personal life. And unless and until you immerse yourself in your job completely, it becomes a part of your personal agenda. It's become, your success will be there, but you will be good, you will not be great. Right. And this is the same advice pretty much for people who are already in human resources. Read up, network more, talk to people, find out what is not working and don't be shy about it. If something is not working, go ahead and change it. If you're struggling for something, ask for help. It is no longer a siloed function. It is about being present, being engaged and working together with the business, the core job of the business to reach the same goal. The goals are no longer different. The goals are same. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from us.